Well, this is Doctors Bob, Anthony, and Case and Maria, and we thank you for joining us for another half hour of health. And today we're going to talk about a condition that we see in our practice, and I know that it's bugging so many of you right now because it's in the newspapers nearly every day. It's allergies. You know, it's pretty bad when you watch a television program or you look at the newspaper and they're telling you to stay in the house because allergy season is here. Well, I want you to know something. I'm closer to 60 than I am 55 years old, and I don't have allergies. So if I don't have allergies, and I know that Dr. Anthony and Dr. Kaysen don't have allergies, for those of you that are watching me right now, nobody should have allergies. So we're going to discuss with you what we have found from our experience, the leading cause of allergies, and what you can do to help prevent that. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Anthony right now. We're going to have a little conversation, make a difference in your life. Call a friend. So one of the things that we've been doing when we've been researching allergies and we've been seeing patients in the office is figuring out some of the common symptoms that comes from allergies and runny nose, sinus pressure, and congestion seem to be among the top of the allergy symptoms. But one of the things that we really discovered is that symptoms are just a cause of telling you that something's wrong. But it's not necessarily a bad thing to have symptoms, just like having a fever or diarrhea. It's your body's way of telling you that there's something that needs to get out of your body that, that is not quite right. So I just find that the body is a fascinating piece of art and machinery. I think it's kind of funny that uh, but you're right about the whole diarrhea. If somebody has diarrhea, which we were not necessarily going to associate with allergies, but what Dr. Anthony is saying. And before I turn it over to Dr. Case, let me show you what's happening here. This is so significant. This is an example of a spine that is actually a piece of research material. This is, a, this is a spinal vertebra right here, and this is a disc, and this is another spinal vertebra. Now, what you're going to see is that this particular nerve is very large, but this vertebra right here, for whatever reason, has moved out of position. And in chiropractic, we call that a subluxation. That subluxation is impairing function to a nerve. This particular nerve was going to the person's kidney, and this person died of kidney failure. But what we have learned from our experience, if you have subluxation, especially up in your neck on the left and in your mid-back region, you have a greater chance and potential to have chronic allergies. And I know that Dr. Case and myself and Dr. Anthony are going to explain to you how that's going to uh, impact your body. So Dr. Kaysen, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the subluxation, what you've seen in our practice so far. So far, um, I've seen a lot of people, like you said, with a C2, so the top vertebra, and also the thoracics. Um, I know that we've been adjusting a lot of people's ears lately. Um, just adjusting your ears? Yes, <laughs> it, it helps with hearing too. <laughs> but I know just by releasing that pressure, a lot of people, they get instant relief right away. They can feel their sinuses draining. And also by doing their sinus pressures too, um, using the activator, which is the type of adjusting that we do. But a lot of people, they're very surprised that just with an ear adjustment, they can get so much relief. It's better than any Claritin. <laughs> no, no it's, it's kind of funny right now because <laughs> We're going to explain to you about what an ear adjustment is. I never even thought about talking about that today. That's really awesome because if you were to go to YouTube, we actually have uh, showing you how to have an ear adjustment. So what it is is that the tube that's in the inside of your ear goes down into your throat area. There are three bones in your ear. Are you ready? This is always a test question, by the way. It's the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And those three vertebra, or those three vertebra, those three little bones can actually get out of alignment, especially if you've flown on an airplane. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've had patients come in that just thoroughly love getting their ears adjusted because when they go up on an airplane, that pressure causes those little bones in the ears to go out of alignment. And so what we gently do, <laughs> and this is a joke right now, Manisha, I learned how to do an ear adjustment back in 1963. You do the math when I was in the second grade. And you say, how did you learn that, Dr. Bob? Well, where I was going to school at that time, one of the teachers, whatever thought would be a good thing to teach me, I was being uh, a little rude probably at the time. But basically in our practice, what we do, and don't do this at home, we just very firmly and gently grab a hold of the earlobe and tilt your head and just do a little 
tug on it, and you could literally, I know that when we do these adjustments, mm -hmm. you can really feel noise. And hear noise, and it's the little um, bones in the ears, and that gets such a great release. So I, I'm glad that you talked about that. That's tremendous, and how it affects the nervous system. So one of the things that I was going to say is that uh, we've been putting a lot of information up on our Facebook page. Uh, so I would encourage you to go onto Facebook and like us at North Coast Chiropractic because we're really working on getting out more information that we give, not just on this program, but that we're getting through the internet to be able to educate our patients on things that are out there like allergies, vaccines, uh, adjusting babies and, and breastfeeding. And I think one of the things that Dr. Kaysen and I found that was the most fascinating when we've been doing some research with Dr. Bob is how what you eat and your digestion has everything to do with those allergies that you have. So I'm going to have you talk to us a little bit about what goes on when you have improper digestion and how that affects the allergies that you have. And so we're going to have you wait with bated breath to find out why I have these two large, or why we have these two large uh, bottles of soda. But what I'm holding in my hand right now, this is a circuit breaker. And I want you to think of your spinal vertebra as breakers. And see, these breakers can go off. You hear that click? Well, let's just say, this is going to be a stretch for some of you right now, that you have poor posture. So you're sitting at work, and the vertebra in your mid-back region are being compressed. The sixth thoracic vertebra impacts the stomach and your digestive system. If you go down a little bit lower, the first lumbar vertebra has a big impact on your colon. So what we have learned over time is this. If you have faulty digestion, and you've probably heard this term before, it's called a leaky gut syndrome. That means that if you have undigested food particles, and I'm going to tell you right now, these are the two most notorious foods that will cause allergies. It's peanut butter, and it doesn't have to be Jif. It could be Skippy, it could be Peter Pan. We just happen to have Jif as a part of our props. And this is a bottle of milk. Dairy products and peanut butter are the two leading food items that will go through your digestive system. And what will happen is the protein in those foods will cause a red alert or fire. So your body's going to respond with these T cells attacking these undigested proteins and protein particles, and it's going to increase histamine. So your colon because, becomes like a sieve. So this undigested food particles go through there, and your body starts attacking it. And I can tell you that Dr. Kaysen had a huge revelation about something that all of you, not all of you, but most of you are doing every day, that could be a leading cause of inflammation in your digestive system. And I think this is very, this is exciting stuff that you discovered. Um, through our research, just in the past few weeks, I know Dr. Anthony and I have been um, diligent, pre diligently preparing for our half hour to health next week on allergies. But I know through our research, we've been discovering that people who take aspirin or Tylenol or any kind of medication they're more um, prone for allergies because those medications thin the lining in the gut and can cause you to have a leaky gut. So any of you out there taking an aspirin a day to make you healthy, you're actually doing, you know, going backwards in steps and making yourself have a leaky gut. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting as, as Dr. Kaysen brought this up. And I, we don't promote people taking aspirin. Not, we're not telling you to go off your aspirin. You talk to your prescribing healthcare provider, They'll tell you to stay on. Bayer is going to tell you to stay on. But what we're saying is just common sense. I think what's really interesting about what we do at North Coast Chiropractic, it's kind of like I feel like I'm Isaac Newton, and we discovered the law of gravity. See, subluxation, even though it might be a new term for some of you, it's going to happen if you like it or not. This is not about Dr. Bob, Dr. Case, or Dr. Anthony. These are principles. These are God-given principles, and gravity happens to be a part of the curse. But in Dr. Bob's Trans Fat Survival Guide, we have a chapter in there that talks about proper fat metabolism. When you take an aspirin every day, you're tricking your body. Do you know there's research out there that people who take aspirin have a greater chance to get a stroke and have bleeding in their intestines? Let me share this other nugget with you. People who take aspirin and they have fractures in their body, like let's say you fractured something, if you take an aspirin, you're going to literally slow 
the healing process down. So I know that there are many of you right now that take an aspirin a day to keep your blood thin so you don't get another heart attack. And research is showing that that might not necessarily be true. So in our practice, we recommend different types of oils. And we actually test people for oils and gives us an idea of what you definitely need to take. So Dr. Anthony, what are the kind of insights you want to talk about in regard to uh, the spine and the nervous system before we go on to this next level of some of these other foods and items. I know one of the things that I wanted to share with you guys was uh, the fact that I have never had allergies. Dr. Bob's never had allergies and Dr. Kaysen doesn't have allergies. So one of the things that we like to say, you know, is when we go outside, it's the same pollen, dust mite, pet dander in the air that we're breathing, that you're breathing. So if we don't get it and you get it, there has to be something that you're doing that we're not doing. So that's like one of those things when you get that light bulb moment that goes on and somebody says, you know what, I think that those three are onto something because we are. We're telling you that if you have a properly functioning nervous system and you make healthy lifestyle choices that include eliminating wheat, soy, dairy, sugar, and alcohol, that you could really make an impact on your allergies. And some people say, well, what else can I do? You know, well, this is what, it takes a little bit of work, but with that little bit of work, we're gonna see major results. And we see it every single day in our practice. You might be watching us online today. You might be sitting in our office watching this video, but we wanna tell you that there is hope and we see it every single day with everybody that comes into our office and they leave with smiling faces and they say, that Dr. Bob, Dr. Kaysen, and Anthony, they are so smart because they helped me change my life around through chiropractic and lifestyle changes. You know, I'm kind of smiling because it's kind of interesting. Um, what we're talking about today, and we read this, and the research shows So, Dr. Anthony made some really very important points that I'm going to just kind of re-cement. Gluten, wheat, I have done so much work on, on wheat and gluten projects on it. I have seen patients come into our office that we do diet journals on them and when they eat wheat or rye or oats and I just learned even barley so that means mm. people could have allergies because they drink beer. Now if you want to drink alcohol that is obviously your choice but anytime you put alcohol in your body you're compromising liver function. But what wheat does it literally causes the little villi in your bodies to glue together. The villi are the little finger-like projections that are inside of your intestines that Dr. Kaysen was talking about with the whole leaky gut syndrome that can cause chronic allergies. So as Dr. Anthony was saying, if you're concerned right now that you're going to go outside and the pollen is going to attack your body and then you're going to have to take this little spray, which we're going to talk about after the break, you have been duped. And we're not trying to be unkind. But like he said, if the three of us don't have any allergies and our patients come in and they, they understand and they make the appropriate necessary lifestyle changes and they don't have allergies, that means nobody should have allergies. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Dr. Kaysen, Dr. Bob, and Dr. Anthony DiMaria. We're excited to be here today. We're talking and continuing talking about allergies. So I want to talk to you about the thing, the crazy things that people do thinking that they have allergies. You've seen people using these little nasal sprays, nose drips, and I know Dr. Bob was just discussing with me, there are nasal sprays and nose drips that have zinc in them that have actually caused people to lose their smell, which is just crazy to me. But we are reading also that people put all kinds of face masks on. Um, they're taking Claritin. They're taking all these different kinds of liquids, pills. You might as well just stay inside and live in a box, really. I mean, that's what the medical community is telling us to do is just don't go outside. But I think what we're here to educate you is that your nervous system and what we do in the office has everything to do with having um, your, your body function at 100%. Because if your body is not functioning, which this is just a cable cord showing us how the spinal cord goes all the way down and connects to all the organs. Um, if this isn't functioning, then you are, you're gonna have allergies also with your leaky gut. 
It's very so. interesting. Can, can you hold that up? I had this yeah. idea because we have okay. so people can understand what's going on. So your spinal cord is a continuation of your brain. And so what hit, let's just pretend that this is one of the vertebrae right here. And if Dr. Anthony, if we can get all this at one time. So if the vertebra is out of alignment, putting pressure on the nerve, and so like, let's say this is a nerve going to your colon, that your colon's not going to function optimally. So you can say, what are you guys trying to say to me? Because this is new information for some of you. Your nervous system controls the function of your body. Your brain sends down 28 billion messages every day. So Dr. Kaysen was saying to you, we're just talking about allergies today. We have people that come into our office that have had heart problems, chronic asthma. Do you know there are 45, now listen to this, between kids 21 years old and younger, 45 million prescriptions for asthma alone. 45 million. Do you understand that? That is like so huge. So if you have misalignment in your spine, do you know how much money Claritin made two years ago just on Claritin alone? Three billion dollars. Do you think that they want us to be telling you what to do. So Dr. Kaysen was saying, when they, people are spraying some of this zinc oxide, and they actually, I believe, took the product off the market, there was a lady that wrote a book on the fact that she lost, can you imagine losing your sense of taste and smell because you had chronic allergies? And as simple as simple as, something as simple as making a few lifestyle changes. You know, Dr. Anthony, I know that we're kind of joking and laughing here a little bit in our own way because we don't have allergies. And, you know, I have these people that, they come in the office and it's so sad when people come in and they, they don't want to go outside or do anything. I feel, I feel bad for those people when we were reading some of these lists and the things that what traditional medicine wants you to do. And when I read Stay Inside, I said, so they pretty much want you to not do anything and watch all of their media jargon on the television so you can get more prescription drugs and that's exactly not what we want you to do we want you to be able to enjoy your life and we work with our patients at bringing their life to their full potential by unlocking their subluxations and making sure that they are enjoying their lives to their fullest potential and some of the things that we just want to talk to you about simple steps to start your road to optimal health includes Increasing the amount of water that you're drinking. I know that a lot of people struggle with water, and that doesn't mean soda, that doesn't mean tea, that means good old H2O from a pure source, drinking half your body weight in ounces every single day. And I know that for myself, Dr. Kaysen and Dr. Bob, when we consume much more water, that we feel even better than we already do. And you can say, much more better? Is that even a, a allowed to say? Or is it say, well, yes, it is, because that's how we function on a higher level. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you, besides water, is the fact that stress on your life can contribute to your subluxations in your neck and your spine and can make things worse. So think of stress like wrenching and pulling on this dog toy. This is like your spinal cord getting twisted every time that you're sitting at your office and you're on your computer or you're letting things get to you that don't need to. Stress is so detrimental to your health that you will never know the effects of how bad it is until you get off of some stress and eliminate those things from your life and it's like a weight was lifted off your shoulders. But when you do those things like eliminate stress, get proper sleep, and drink a lot of water, you can be on the road to optimum health as well as getting adjusted. So I would encourage you to call us up and schedule an appointment for us that you can come in and we will see you in our office. And I'd also encourage you to like us on Facebook where we're always giving updated information about what's going on because we just have so much to give to the world and we want you guys to be able to experience some of that Cairo love. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, it's kind of interesting because what Dr. Anthony was talking about, and I was watching him do this, I think what's important is most people don't realize how impactful their posture is to their overall health. And if your posture, and one of the new, what we're doing and analyzing when people come into our office right now, and I'd encourage you to do this yourself, be a great uh, activity to do is you take a stand, have someone stand up straight and get your digital camera and take a or your camera phone and take a side 
picture of their posture. And I know that Dr. Kaysen is mm -hmm. always saying, do you want to tell everybody where, how their posture is supposed to be? Because we talk about this sure. all the day in the practice. And I know what we do in the office too, you don't just stand straight, you have them shut their eyes. Shut your eyes and then march in place and put your head up and down, up and down, because people when they see their posture, they try to correct it. So we don't want them tricking, you know, tricking themselves. But I know every inch your head is forward is like 12 pounds being on top of your brainstem and your spinal cord. So that's like a bowling ball. I think, I think that people, can you say that again yeah. and look, really okay. look at okay. them? Okay. <laughs> so every inch that your head is forward, it, could, it, it is 12 pounds. So some people in our office, they're coming to, into our office and their head's two to three inches forward. That's like 36 so extra pounds that's like that? 36 extra pounds forward, but also what we're finding in our research through what we've been doing is that your neck has everything to do with your pelvis. So if you're at a computer, if you're, you know, the laptops and everything, if your head's forward, your pelvis automatically wants to go underneath your head to have the center of gravity. Wow, that's huge. Wow, this really is amazing. So what happens is if your posture's off, like Dr. Kaysen's saying, one of the things that we have for our patients to do is we, besides give them a spinal correction, spinal adjustment, we have them do door jam exercises where they literally go up to a door and they push their body in like this and their goal is to get your shoulders backwards and get your head back over like this. And also, you can get a large ball, a 55 centimeter exercise ball, I'm sure you've seen them at most of the stores, and start laying backwards on it. I know that I do that on a regular basis and I even add 12 or 15 pound weights just to help pull my head and my neck and my shoulders back because what we're trying to convey to you is how significant the spine and the nervous system is. So like this is a huge puzzle. So you could have misalignment caused by stress and poor diet because see what you eat can also impact the nervous system. So I have nothing against, um, would you mind holding this for me Dr. Kaysen? I have nothing against soda. I really do, I'm just trying to be diplomatically correct. <laughs> And if I had my trifocals on right now, and I, I don't wear trifocals, that is a little bit of a joke. And we look at the ingredients in Dr. Pepper, and I intentionally brought iced tea because I know a lot of people think iced tea is really healthy for them. Herbal tea is healthy for you. Green tea is definitely an antioxidant. But there's something in this soda called sodium benzoate. I'll say that again. Sodium benzoate. So when the program is finished, I want you to go to your refrigerator, go to your pantry, go to your garage, wherever you hold your soda at, and I want you to look for the ingredient. So it's in iced tea, it's in many of the major beverages in the United States. Sodium benzoate is a preservative, and it's a known factor for causing allergies. So if you kind of listen to what we're saying right now, let's say that you happen to be working at a cubicle at work, and you take a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and then you have yogurt, and you're chasing it down with some type of soda, I'll guarantee you right now, you have inflammation in your body, you have poor posture, you have allergies, more than likely, you're taking anywhere from three to six medications, over-the-counter medications every day that have bad effects. And you say, what do you mean bad effects? See, all drugs have bad effects, but what's happened is media has flipped it to be side effects. One medication has 10 bad effects. Two medications have 100. Three have 1,000. Four have 10,000. Five have 100,000. By the time you get to nine, it's a billion. Now, recently, a very famous singer passed away because of an, uh, a challenge that she had with medications and combining medications. Do you know that two people die every two hours from the bad effects of pain medication?